Welcome to Beyond the Sermon podcast, where we hope to stir your faith by pulling truths from the sermons at Believer's Fellowship and discussing them here together. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Sermon podcast. I'm Heather Alligato, your host, and today I have Mr. and Mrs. Hagens, <laughs> Jarius and Elise Hagens. Finally. Hello. Yes, finally. <laughs> Good stuff today. And uh, we're doing the Covenant Body and Blood series, continuing that. This is the fourth, or I'm sorry, this is the 13th part in the YouTube series that Pastor John did. And um, anyone listening, you can find that in the description box below. Uh, wow. This one was a really, really, really good reminder. It's talking mainly about shame yeah. and the blood of Jesus, how that has removed, cleansed us from all sin, shame. Yeah. And one of the things I wanted to begin was Isaiah 53. Pastor John started here in this scripture, 53, three through six. We all know it, but when we read it, if we can just read it like we've never heard it, because right. uh, it's really good. I have NLT in verse three, it starts with, he has despised, he was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted and deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, mm. a punishment from his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion and crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He laid our sins. And reading that and listening to this sermon with Pastor John, I've been reminded, like many of us um, will, will be if you go listen, that as children of God, we have a right. Mm -hmm. It is our right as a child of God. We do not have to live in shame. Right. right. You just read that Jesus took, he bore that shame. We do not have to live a life where we think I'm not good enough because that's mm -hmm. all shame is. It's I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. I didn't do enough. But Jesus died, broke his body, poured out his blood for us. You know, he died for our sins. Because yeah. mm -hmm. usually when you died on the cross, it was because you, you were right. a sinner. It was the most, it was the the worst way right. a, a criminal could die. It was like, you've done the worst thing. And Jesus did that. And most people um, who who died on the cross, they died before they even got there. Right. Because mm -hmm. right. it was so, so vicious. Yes. And leading up to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so to see ourselves as him on that cross, to say, he, that's me on mm -hmm. that cross. He took my shame, right. not just mm -hmm. my sin and, and not just for healing, but that shame. I'm good enough because of right. Jesus. Right. Those, those statements, I'm not good enough and I couldn't do enough. Those are actually true statements. Mm. That's why God had to send Jesus because I was not good enough yeah. because I could not do enough. I could not fulfill the law. That's why God set up a plan, Jesus, to do it for me. And now I can rest in what he has done. Yes. He's washed me clean. And when I try to do it myself and I miss it, that's where shame comes in. That's, that's where right. we get into that. I knew I, I, could, I couldn't do it. And, and so now you're bringing shame on yourself because you're trying to do it in yourself. Right. You have to rest in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. He already bore all of that on himself yeah. for you. You don't have to wear shame anymore. He wore it for you. He clothed himself in shame for you. And when he died on the cross, shame was left in the grave. Yes. That's right. That's what came to me is that Jesus bore shame so that we wouldn't have to. Shame is almost like our self-punishment for our own sin. Mm -hmm. But Jesus took that punishment for us. Right. So, and I, I feel like sin is an open door to shame, right? Like whenever we send shame comes in, we go all the way back to the garden of Eden, mm -hmm. you know, which was this perfect paradise. Right. And then sin came in, right. Eve sinned. And then shame came yeah. shortly after they hid, they hid. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Hebrews four fourteen. You reminded me of that, Elise. 
because how do we take hold of the power of righteousness through the blood? Mm. Mm. How do we take hold of the body and the blood? And it's the same way that we are saved and stay saved. Yeah. We, we are saved. Pastor John said this in the, in the uh, sermon. We're saved by faith through yes. faith. And we stay saved by faith through faith. Right. And so not to take the blood of Jesus and say, um, I'm going to use the blood every time I sin right. or, or feel shameful. Right. Right. I'm going to use the blood that way. But to come to a higher thought life mm. and a higher place and a, and a honor and respect to what the blood of Jesus did and live in a place that says, I'm going to use the blood to keep right. me clean. Yes. And so Hebrews 4, 14 through 16 says that. It, it tells us that God's throne is a throne of grace yes. and mercy. We don't crawl in. Mm. Mm-hmm. We walk in on our two feet, whether we sinned or not sinned, Jesus made it possible for us to walk into that throne of grace. We come there for mercy and mm. for grace in time of need, the scripture says. And so I, that scripture, I mean, we could just talk about that the whole time. Yeah, That's what it says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. It says, therefore, believers, since we have confidence yes. and full freedom, to enter the holy place, the place where God dwells by the means of Jesus' blood. Yeah. The reason I can em- enter confidently is because of the blood of Jesus. Mm-hmm. I'm not covered in shame. I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. That's why I can come boldly as a son or a daughter, yeah. a child of God, because I know that he's not focused on the shame. He's focused. He sees me filtered through the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And we have to see ourselves that right. way. Holding up the Bible, James says, as a mirror, mm-hmm. seeing myself as God sees me. Yeah. Um, shame defined is removed from grace. A verb for shame is disgraced right. or removed from grace. Mm. So when we shame ourselves, we are removing, we're, it's basically pride. Right. Um, like you said, Jerry, earlier, we're not good enough. Right. And so when we take it into our own hands, like Eve and Adam did, and we right. cover ourselves, we're being prideful. We're right. not recognizing what Jesus did. Right. And so we're being removed from grace because God gives grace to the humble. Right. And grace, I remember Pastor John said this in the sermon, grace is actually the power to overcome sin. Right. So if I'm allowing shame to disgrace me, mm-hmm. I'm actually allowing shame to take the very thing away from me that won't cause me to be in shame anymore. Yeah, right. That's so good. <laughs> who, who does that sound like? The devil. <laughs> yes, yeah. That's, yeah. That's exactly. what I was going to say. What a deception of the devil to keep us stuck. Yeah. Yep. To keep us thinking about what we did and how awful we are. When the whole purpose of communion in general, Jesus said, remember me. Mm-hmm. When you do this, remember me. Don't remember your sin. Don't remember your shame. Don't stay in what you did, but remember me mm-hmm. yeah, and what I've done for you. That's, that is powerful because I think a lot of people do that. Um, whether they do it in a holy honoring, thank you, Lord. I'm mm-hmm. not that anyway, but right. communion is a time to remember that um, Jesus, I have it written in my Bible, communion, it reminds us that the judgment of God was placed on Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. I, yes. We were sinners but I'm not judged as a sinner. Yeah. Well, well we were judged as Thank a sinner God. through Jesus, right. but, yes. but we, I mean, we get, we get to walk in. Right. What a freedom that we're able to walk in because of what Jesus did for us. Yeah. And how sad would it be? I think that sometimes God, you know, looks and he's just like, come on, man. Like I, I shed my blood so that you wouldn't have to stay there. Come out. Right. Yeah. Come see the truth that I paid for you to walk in. Come walk in grace. Step out of that shame. Yeah. Come out of that place of sin and in constant dwelling there. To, don't let that be your dwelling place. Let me be your dwelling place. Yeah. And stay out. Yes. yes. And stay out. And stay out. We yes. the blood empowers us to stay yep. out yes. of that. And so I think that's the that's the part that people may struggle with. Mm -hmm. But when you recognize the power of the blood and then when the devil comes to shame you and you can say, I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. Yes. You know, being convicted and being condemned are two different things. Yes. Being convicted by the Holy Spirit is the Lord correcting us as children. And we want that. It's, It's a reminder to us, 
oh, I'm his son. He loves me. Yeah. He's helping me. Being condemned is is not of God. Right. You know, that's um, like when the woman, the adulteress, and they threw her out in front of Jesus. Yes. They were, think about that. They, they were trying to trip Jesus up because right. he operated under the Levitical law. Mm-hmm. And they wanted to see, what do you think about? It? Because they gave him two options. Right. Did we stone her? Yeah. Or do we let her go free? And whatever option, it was like, they were like, we've yeah. got him. Yes, exactly. And then it's like, you know, he's like option three, Lord. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> option three. So, <laughs> wrote, wrote yeah. So um, in, in studying this, I, I wrote down, if anyone has the right to, get, to condemn us, it'd be Jesus. Mm. Yeah. But he didn't. Right. He died for us. Yeah. He's perfect and holy without sin. So he had the right to condemn us, but he didn't. Right. Um, John three sixteen for God so loved the world He gave us His only begotten Son. But seventeen says He did not come right. to, to condemn. condemn us. Right, He came to release us from condemnation. He took yes. condemnation on Himself. And what happens is you you tell you say you invite someone to church and they say like, oh, I got to get this right, I got to get this right. They're mm-hmm. trying to remove shame themselves. Right, and that that's impossible. You have you go back to Adam and Eve before they sin they didn't even know nakedness was not a shameful thing mm. nakedness became a shameful thing after they sinned they tried to cover themselves with fig leaves now if you remember jesus went up to a fig tree one time and saw no fruit on it so when you try to cover when you try to remove yourself from shame the fig leaves are symbolic of fruitlessness to mm. try and remove your own shame is mm. fruitlessness you will it, you can't do it you can't right. go anywhere that's why jesus cursed the fig tree and said Said, there is no fruit going on and no fruit will ever come from you again. So now if I'm trying to cover my own shame is fruitless. That's yes. why I have to accept the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So now even back in the olden days, whenever they wanted to um, humiliate someone, they would strip them naked and parade them through the city. You know what they would yell? Shame. Mm-hmm. The, the whole town would yell shame, shame, shame as they walk because now nakedness is a shameful thing. But now we're no longer clothed in nakedness. We're clothed by the blood of Jesus. That's right, in righteousness. We're not, we're not in shame anymore. So God no longer sees my, in Hebrews it says, God see, he sees everybody's nakedness. So in that case, God sees the shame of everybody. But mm. it's through the blood of Jesus. Now, I'm no longer clothed with shame. That's right. When Jesus died, my nakedness of shame was washed away. And yeah. now I'm clothed with the blood of Jesus now. Yeah. Yeah. And he removed my shame. The fig, the fig leaves only covered shame. When you, when you put your clothes on, it only covers your nakedness. You're naked underneath. Mm-hmm. So to, to try and do this self thing, you're only covering shame. But the blood of Jesus removes shame. Yes. Eternally. Eternally. Forever. Yeah. Eternally. Blotted out. Pastor said the blood has the power to connect you to Christ or separate you. Yes. Yep. The power of the blood is released through action when we attach our faith to it. To 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 have the the power of the blood operate in your life is by faith. Mm-hmm. You can right. release the power of blood into your life yep. by faith. By faith. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, love, I like what he said. He said, uh, "Yeah, you kind of mentioned this earlier. When he's like, you can either I plead the blood after I make the mistake, or I can plead the blood before I make the mistake yes. and not make the mistake at all. It's yes. a higher way of yes. thinking, yep. which is where God wants us. Like you said, Elise, He wants us to live in that dwelling place. It's a higher. It's oh." That's why, we have, to, that's <laughs> oh my why we have to change the way we think. Yes, yeah. we've got to kill that thought of I did something bad. I need right. to be punished. Yes. Kill it. That Kill that. Um, you never want to be a part of making someone feel bad. Yes. So right. think, think about that and then, and then turn it around on yourself. We never want to be a part of making someone feel bad. Right. I never want to be a part of making myself right. feel bad right. for what I've done, for what they've done. Because that's the devil's business. Right. That's the devil's work. That's what the devil does. I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want to be a part of making someone feel shamed or guilty for what they did. Right. I want to, I want to restore them. Yes. I want to 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 speak life to them. I want to say, no, you no, you're looking at this wrong. Look at this. Look mm. at the word. Look at who you are. No, that's no, no, no. And 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 restore their their sense of um perspective of, of mm-hmm. who how they're looking at themselves. That's yes. what we're that's right. the business we're in. Right. Yes. Higher thinking, higher way, higher walking. Um 
um, h- higher fellowship. Right. Never get down with someone when they're shaming themselves. Yeah. We should not be doing that right. with we don't our agree brothers and sisters. With that, we we bring them to a higher place. We keep going back to this higher place. <laughs> well, I think that's because that's what we have to see ourselves how God sees us. Yes. Otherwise, because Pastor John said this is like what we focus on is what we draw to ourselves. So if I'm constantly sin conscious, right, I'm going to keep sinning. That's right. But if I'm conscious of I am the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. then I, my my thoughts are thinking that and then my actions it's who reflect I am. that. So then I do, I act righteously. I think righteously. I do righteous thing because I'm not conscious of sin and shame. I'm conscious of God has delivered me from sin and shame. Yeah. In Proverbs chapter uh, 23, verse seven, it says, for as a man thinking in his heart, so, so is he. he. People usually stop right there at that, at that verse, but there's more to it. So we'll do the first part. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What you constantly dwell and meditate on is what your life is going to produce. If I'm, if I'm constantly meditating on, I'm a screw up, um, this or on that, that's what your life is going to produce. But if yeah. you meditate on, I'm a child of God, I'm the righteousness of God, I'm a victorious Christian, I'm not trying to overcome, I am more than a conqueror, I'm a, then my life will produce the actions that produce these things. Mm-hmm. It says... Eat and drink, said he, but his heart is not with thee. So you have one, this man, he's saying, eat all you want. I'll, I'll take care of the cost. But really, in his heart, he's stingy. Really, he don't want to pay for it. And so you have people who, in church, they shout amen. They shout hallelujah. But in their heart, in their mind, they think, I'm, no, I'm nothing. I'm never going to overcome sin. See, they're saying one thing, but their heart is focused on another thing. Mm. So you have to get your mind focused on I am the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. And then their life will begin to produce right. what they're constantly meditating on. We mm-hmm. need a revelation of that, right? Of God's word and what he says about us. And that comes through meditating, right? In, ingesting the word of God and thinking about it, meditating on it until it becomes revelation in my life. Yeah. He says, meditate on it day and night. We said yeah. that in the last podcast day too, be, but that's so important. Um, and then at the same time, it doesn't make you righteous. Mm. That's not why he's telling you that. Mm. And that's important to yes. get in you. Right. You, your righteous works do not make you righteous. Like you're saying, Jerry, yeah. that is like the key. That is a fundamental principle of Christianity. Um, th- what you think on mm-hmm. is how you will act. Yes. Yes. And too many people, you know, shame, shame mm-hmm. will cause you, uh, I re- shame not only ties you to your failure of mm. the past, wow but it produces failure of the future. Yes, that is so good. And I wrote this down. Pastor said this, not in this series, but he said this in a few Wednesdays ago, and I jotted it down for us. He said, the buddies of shame are defeat, failure, sickness, poverty. I mean, you can just keep going on. It's just a package deal. (laughs) That's That's how bad it is to shame, to let shame in your life, to shame yourself or to shame people. That's so revealing. Yeah, that's why we can't. That's why we can't. in Hebrews chapter 12, verse two, it says, looking away from all that will distract us, mm. focusing our eyes on Jesus. See, our focus has to be not self. It has to be Jesus. Yeah. You had Peter who was walking on the water. He said, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come. He came. It's when he took his focus off of Jesus Christ that he began to sink. Mm-hmm. He began looking around, seeing like this is impossible for me to do. Mm-hmm. He began to sing, but Jesus was right there, ready to deliver him, yeah. looking away from all that would distract, focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. He's the author. He, so what Jesus started in me, he's going to yes, finish. That's right. He's not going to leave me undone. That's right. Yes. In verse three, it says, Con- just consider and meditate on him who endured from sinners such bitter hostility against himself, considering it in comparison with your trouble so you don't grow weary and lose heart. Mm. Jesus has already done it. Shame has already been removed. It's not trying to be removed. Mm -hmm. It's already been removed. He has already taken the shame on himself and I have to keep my focus on him. Yes. As long as I keep my focus on him, I will stay walking on the water. I won't, my life won't begin to sink. Yeah. I have a a testimony about that. So, and it's, I think I, I believe it's very relatable, but you can get so, mm, hard on yourself, Mm -hmm. you know, if you're constantly 
you know, messing up at the same thing over and over and over and over. And I, I know this, like I, like I know I have two eyeballs on my head <laughs> that I'm only a failure if I don't get up. Yes. I, I know that I've got that down, but it's sometimes when you just, when you just mess up so many times and you, and you have to just get back up, sometimes it's just like, right. you're like, okay, before I get back up, let me have a plan, yeah. you know, <laughs> like, because, yeah, exactly. because the last 10 times didn't work, you know? <laughs> and I, it's just, I, I've come to that place where I'm just sitting at, at my, you know, desk where I sit and talk to the Lord wondering, okay, I help me. Mm. I'm going, what you, you know what I'm doing? Right. I'm going through the, to the throne of grace yep. and, yes. mercy. Exactly. and I'm saying, I, I know I can't do this. I'm right. really trying. I'm really trying, Lord. Yeah. I'm really trying to do your word. I'm really trying to to do this the right way. I, what am I doing wrong? Mm. And just letting him show me in his word mm. and give me a word. Yeah. If I just hear you tell me what to do, I, it will make everything better. Yeah. It will help me get back up. Yeah. And so when you, when you, for, now I'm telling you, I've, I've even had to force myself to speak in tongues mm -hmm. when I didn't want to, to get up or talk to God, but I know better. And I've literally had to force myself and yeah. go, Holy Spirit, help me pray, you know, mm -hmm. and get in four wheel drive. Mm -hmm. And then in a matter of five, 10 minutes, I'm lit. I'm yeah. like, thank yeah. you, yes. Lord. And yes. so we have to do that. We have to, um, we have to, with, with, uh, like a, bulldog attitude say to ourselves i will not mm. agree ag yep. or i will not disagree with the word of god yes if he says i can live shame free if yep. he says i can live sin free yes. if he says i'm righteous if he says i'm an overcomer if he says that i can do all things through christ if he says this i'm going to see it in my life yeah. i'm going to see it in my kids life yep. i'm going to see it in my marriage and my family yes and so again that higher higher thinking we might have to rename the podcast higher i know high. <laughs> but that higher way of thinking right. jerry i just think that you just nailed it like yeah. meditating on the right thing and thinking about right. righteous things will cause you to live righteous right. yep. walking in the spirit and when we walk in the spirit we will not Yes. indulge in the things of the flesh. And along with what you were saying, Heather, about your story and your experience, it reminded me of how David encouraged himself in the Lord. He encouraged himself. He didn't wait for somebody else to encourage him. Like you, you said, I have to, I'm going to speak in tongues. I'm going to, Lord, mm -hmm. help me. Mm, I'm going to do it by golly, no matter like what my flesh is telling me to do right now. I'm going to, I'm going to allow my spirit you know, to, to override what my flesh is feeling. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. He built himself up. And you would find oftentimes in the Psalms where he was down, you know, people yeah. were trying to take his life. He was trying, he was trying to be murdered like every other day, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, but, um, he encouraged himself with the Lord in, in the Lord. And he reached out to the Lord, just like you were saying, God, help me. Right. God, I know that you are my fortress. You are my strong tower. He reminded himself of the goodness of God and it brought him out of that place right. mm -hmm. of shame and hiding or discouragement, despair. It took him out of that place into a place of, okay, this is who I am in Christ. I know who my God is. Right. Mm -hmm. And what you said there was a, it was a big key. David did those things to remind himself. Yes. Mm. Jesus said, as often as you do this, yes. certain, certain churches will do it once a month. Mm -hmm. He put no cap on when you can do communion. That's right. You can yeah, do it a hundred. That's right. You know, as often as you do it, here's the, here's the stipulation though. Do it in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. That's right. When you do this, do this to remember me. You feeling discouraged? You feeling sad? Let me take communion. Lord, mm. you delivered me. You set me. You said you, you. Yeah. I'm reminding myself that this is not who I am. Yes. This is who the devil is trying to push me in the mold to be. That's right. But as I'm taking this communion. Oh, yeah, that's right. I am healed. Yes. Yeah. My body is healed. Oh, yeah. My sins are washed away. Yeah. Break the bread, <laughs> drink the wine. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's powerful. It's powerful. We do not. Um, oh. Colossians 3, 1 through 3 is where I wanted to go. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights mm. on the realities of heaven. 
Hallelujah. Where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. So the next time the devil tries to put shame on you, yep. or you, or you try to put shame on yourself, you can just read this and you can say, well, I've been raised to new life with Christ. Right. Yes. So I set my my sights on the realities of heaven, which are eternal, mm. where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Right. He satisfied the law. Mm -hmm. It's satisfied. Nothing mm. I do can 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 add anything to me. I can't I, I can't do that. I can't make myself right. It's very important to to realize that. And then they go, well, I don't have to do anything. No, no, no. Because of what he did. Right. When we got saved, our old nature. Right. Yeah. So are we live in, in a new nature now. So those righteous works are inevitable. That that's mm -hmm. our right. new life. Exactly. exactly. So when those things come, we set our thoughts on the heaven. We think about the things of heaven, not the mm -hmm. things of earth. For we died to this life, and our real life is hidden in Christ in God. Mm -hmm. Pastor said, until you believe that it's possible to walk in righteousness, you will continue to yeah. fall. Mm -hmm. Whatever you think on, you draw to yourself. Right. Yeah, it says in, uh, I think it's uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, it says, Therefore, believers, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and, ch and choosing you. Be sure that your behavior reflects and confirms the re your relationship with God. By doing these things, actively developing these virtues, you will never stumble. <laughs> this is the Bible yeah. saying this. You will never stumble. Right there, the Bible has just told me I never have to fall into sin. Yeah. Ever. If I allow the virtues of God to permeate me to my very core. Yes. And that is my, Elisa and I were talking about a um, verse, um, I think it's Philippians chapter four, verse eight. Think on these things. Yeah, they yes. are pure, just, just. lovely, honorable, good report. If mm -hmm. you think on these things, if I allow these things to permeate my spirit, mm -hmm. and that's my constant meditation, the Bible tells me that I will never fall into sin. It's possible. John, Pastor John even said this, that flesh can be sanctified. Yes. I can sanctify my flesh where it no longer desires to do the will of the devil, but even my flesh desires to do the will of God. Yeah. Because my constant meditation is what God said. Yeah. It becomes a slave. Yes. yes. My flesh becomes a slave to me. Yeah. The other way around. <laughs> right, right, right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Well, I, I um, know. yeah. <laughs> I, ending on Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. I just want to read it out um, before we close up. It says, so then, since we have a great high priest mm -hmm. who has entered heaven, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. Mm. <laughs> so let us come boldly to the throne of gracious God, of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy. We will find grace to help us when we need it most. Mm. Mm. Not judgment. I wrote there, not um, judgment. Mercy. We can go to God. You know, um, I I think it's important that we hang out with the right people. Oh, yeah. And that we are not afraid to speak up. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think in this uh, society, it's all, it can be very coddling. Mm -hmm. I, like I just see mm. people like, oh, it's okay, sister. And, da, da, da. and um, you know, and. And not not to be harsh to people, but to remind them right. of the word. And yes. I, that's why I love this sermon, because I'm like, this is such a good reminder for me and for me to help my friends. When yes. they call me, instead of trying to coddle them, mm. I should speak the blood of Jesus to them. I yes. should say, let me tell you what I learned in the scripture about the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. It cleanses us. You don't have to feel that way. That's that's the devil's business. Right. Right. Let's not let's say this. Mm -hmm. And so I, I want to do that. That's what I've learned. And I've also learned I was well, I say learned, but reminded that I come boldly. I walk yes. on two feet to God's throne. Yep. Yeah. No matter what happens, I get to walk to him. Yep. And then his grace pours out uh, pastor. I about said father pastor, <laughs> but pastor John said um, it's the dispensation of grace. That's the time we live in now. Mm -hmm. This time yeah. Jesus sits on the throne and he pours out. He yeah. dispenses yeah. grace onto us. 
in time of help and need. Mm. All because of the blood of Jesus. Wow. Oh, yeah. Thank God. Powerful. <laughs> the blood is Thank powerful. God. Yes, powerful. powerful. Well, we're out of time. Thank you both for coming here. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. And, yeah. yep, and for those listening, enter boldly to the throne of grace because God's mercy is pouring out. And as Pastor John says, stay stirred. Stay stirred.